How's it going crew? This is Happy Days and welcome to a potential new series called Let's Look At. All I want to do with this series is showcase some of the games that I play sometimes that I think you'll enjoy. And I kind of just want to have a bit of a look at it before you go out and spend your hard-earned money on games that sometimes turn out to be pretty average or even worse. So, uh, I'll let you know in advance if I'm showing a game on here, it's probably going to be good. This game is called Crypt of the Necrodancer and you can see that the floor is changing as I move and you'll see that in more effects soon. The game is a rhythm based game and it's played by keeping in time with the beat and you can see a little heart beating along the bottom of the screen and like most rhythm games you have to stay in time with the music and I just started talking all disjointed like that. So obviously there's a tune playing you play this game by moving into mobs to attack them. And you're pretty much invincible as long as you don't get in the mob's path. You can see the disco squares here, so as long as you're moving in time with it, uh, you get multipliers like bonus coins and things like that. Another reason I wanted to show this game was as well is I think the soundtrack is awesome. It's just really happy, really bumpy and jumpy and all that stuff. It's a roguelike game, and if you've never played one of those before, basically every time you play it, the outlay of the dungeon is slightly different. Um, so most roguelikes also have permanent death sometimes, which is an option in this game if you so desire. But uh, we're just playing on normal at the moment. So the story is this young girl Cadence is trying to avenge someone or something like that. You know, that old chestnut. And there's monsters and you get upgrades and all that good stuff that you want. So yeah, um, I don't know if you guys have played rhythm games before but I personally, if I find a good rhythm game, it's amazing. Now I'll give you a tip while we're playing that uh, I'm not even watching the heart at the bottom of the screen. Basically, once you get in the feel of the beat, you pretty much... It's just a timing thing, you know? It's pretty much a move every half a second. Half a second, three quarters of a second. So, yeah, you just gotta groove along while you're playing, and yes, if you were wondering, I'm slightly bobbing my head as we go. Uh, you saw there, I moved into the path of the slime, and that's why I took a damage. Oh, and if you move too soon, yes, you. <laughs> I absolutely love this. The shopkeeper, and sometimes I just dance around him to hear him sing. If you stay in his room long enough, he sings. Um, he seems to do the chorus of the song, which is kind of cool. You can also dig through blocks, which is kind of cool. And sometimes with the shopkeeper you can upgrade your shovel, which is awesome. And he's going to start singing. Come on. You going to sing? Sing for me. It sounds like it's about to drop, you know. Oh no, the song ended. <laughs> dun, dun, dun. And if I give you a tip, it's good to spend a moment at the start of the song just, just listening to the, the, the track and getting in uh, time with it. Because once you're playing, you don't want to miss the beat if you can help it, like I just did there. Dun, dun. It is a little difficult to talk. You can see there's a little fleck in the wall there. That usually means there's a diamond, so that's pretty cool. The thing I like, and you just saw it there, is that the levels are timed. So basically, once the song runs out, you get dropped down to the next level. So you can't just spend forever looking around and trying to get all the cool stuff. Dun. Sorry if I'm missing the uh, timing on this, it is hard to talk and play and listen for the beat at the same time. It seems like there's something good in there but my shovel's not leveled up so we'll keep exploring. A really cool feature about this game that I like, that's a trapdoor so... Uh, a really cool feature about a, that I like about this game is you can put your own music in. The only reason I haven't though is because 
it's highly unlikely that the song you've got matches the beats per minute of the song that they've got. So you need to be cautious with that. Um, each uh, level, there seems to be characters locked in a cage. And if you can rescue them, they go to your base, which I'll show you soon because I'm going to die eventually. And every character does different things. And the monsters have different attack patterns is what I meant to say. Oh, there we go. He's singing again. Alright, so we've got a backpack. There's a chest. So we've got a spell. If you look around the screen, there's different ways you can use items. What's this say? Helps with traps and ice. Yeah, do I want damage? Damage is probably better. Okay, we've got a spell. If you push up and right at the same time, you cast a spell. Which is pretty cool. So, we're going to keep exploring around. Dun, dun. Alright, the exit is always marked by downstairs. But it's probably worth, if you've got time in the song left, you should explore. Ah. Ah, the song ended. Okay. So just taking a moment to get the uh, rhythm going. So it's quite quick, this song. Two, one, go. So you sort of count yourself in and then you should be good for the level. Ah. Taking some damage and we're dead. But that's kind of cool because I want to show you the lobby. It does a little replay of you, lets you know what you got killed by. Okay, so this is the lobby and it gives you an option to turn off the beat here. So this is the mage girl we just saved and she sells items. Now, when it says upgrades on these yellow stands here, um, that just means it can show up in the maze. And diamonds are something you spend when you get back to your base. Uh, this guy in the middle, what's he called? The dungeon master. He sells permanent upgrades, so if we grab this heart, you saw we just got a fourth life heart in the top right corner. Uh, this guy here, who's called Hephaestus? Hephaestus, Hephaestus. Um, he sells upgrades that can appear in chess, which is pretty cool. So we've got two diamonds left. Let's get... The spear is pretty useful. It means you can attack over two, uh, two squares. And let's get the cheese. Alrighty. Here's the, uh, the game screen. And you appear here every time you die. And you will die a lot. It's a roguelike. You're supposed to die, okay? Um, we've got a janitor character. Um, basically, sometimes you buy items and as you get better ones, you don't want the crappier ones to appear. So he can remove them once you've unlocked them, which is a really good feature. You can even play, if you've got one of those dance pads, you can plug that into your computer somehow and play with your feet, which I think is cool. There's a hardcore mode, which in any true roguelike fashion you die permanently, um, which is like Terraria's hardcore mode, but your character is dead for good. There's a tutorial, they do a daily challenge every day, which is like a puzzle. You can play co-op. And zone one is pretty much where we started before. Dun, dun, dun. So yeah, but I guess the point of any roguelike game is the more you play it, uh, you actually get more powerful in this game each time you die. Which sounds strange, but when you go back and you spend your diamonds, it actually gives you a chance to get more hearts, uh, get better weapons put in the chest, things like that. Ooh, sorry, it is hard to... It is hard to talk and do this at the same time. The cool thing is, though, that the enemies do follow patterns, and once you've learned them, uh, you shouldn't really get hit unless you get trapped. I like the... Whoa. I like the addition of the shovel weapon. Uh, it's not a weapon, actually. But it does allow you to move through blocks. So basically at the start of the game you can just move through the dirt blocks that look very similar to Minecraft dirt blocks. Which is pretty cool. And as you go up you might get upgrades for your shovel, you get better weapons, all that good stuff. Um, 
So yeah, and there's secrets. You saw this room, unless we dug in this wall, we wouldn't have found this. Here's another secret room here, and we got a bomb. It says I pushed down and left to use it. <laughs> That's cool, and I found a diamond by blowing up something. You can actually stop if you want to and do nothing, and no one will move, but the song is still going and you will lose your multiplier, so it's just something to be mindful of. Now, the game costs $15, and for... it's still in beta, and it's still being fixed. Now, I haven't run into any game-breaking bugs at the moment. Yeah, there's extra characters. Some are not in still. Oh, we're going. Sorry, he sings pretty loud. <laughs> I love the singing, it's awesome. It just, it makes it fun. Um, there is still features being added to the game. There's different characters that have different powers in the dungeon. Uh, we just rescued this dude. So he'll be in the lobby, which is cool. So when we die next time, that guy will be there for us. He's called the Beastmaster, I think, and he unlocks training levels, which in turn unlocks other things again. Alright, so yeah, the game costs 15 and I'll be honest with you, I paid for it, it put me off at first. And when I first played it, I'm like, mmm, $15 for this, maybe not. But, I'll be honest with you, this game really grows on you. And I only had it for a day or so, but I can see, as you level up, as you get better equipment, the game just gets better and better. The hard mode adds an extra challenge. Uh, similar to a Terraria, if you say it's boring, try playing on Hardcore where your character can permanently die and then say it's boring, you know what I mean? There's always a way to make games harder. <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> uh, there's different music on every level from what I can tell, although it seems to be the same on the first level, so go figure with that. Take that with a grain of salt. Luckily the tunes are awesome, so I don't mind. Is this game worth having a play? Yeah, definitely. And for $15, the way I think of it, if you played this for 10 hours, that's $1.50 an hour. Which, you're hard pressed these days to get entertainment for $1.50 for a whole hour. So think of it that way, guys. I mean, I bought Terraria for 10 bucks. I've played over 200 hours. That's like 20 cents an hour, I think. Is it even that? No, my maths is way off. But you know what I mean. Can someone tell me in the comments, what is that? 100 hours, no, 200 hours, it cost me 10 bucks. Ah, monkey, no! So, anyway, this is my thoughts on Crypt of the Necrodancer. It's a fun game, you're gonna have a ball playing it. Um, yeah, let me know if you like this new series. And if you do want to see a Let's Play of this game, let me know in the comments too. But pretty much the point of this series is just to show you the game. And that's pretty much where it stops. Unless I get like lots of people saying, let's play it. Then yeah, sure I'll play it. Otherwise, hope you enjoyed the video. Hope it's given you some more info on your purchase. And uh, I'll see you next time. Stay happy crew. I'll see you later. This is Happy Day signing out.